Many people struggle with their monthly budget simply because they've forgotten to add these expenses. When you set up your budget for the first time, it's easy to remember things like rent or your mortgage payment, <laughs> utilities, yeah. food, very important thing to remember. But there are some things that come up periodically that you might forget to add to your budget. What are these silent budget killers? And what can you do to remediate the situation so that they don't come up unexpectedly and find you searching for cash? That's what we're going to talk about in this video, and be sure you pay attention to number 10. But before we even start, I'll mention that we have struggled with every single one of these areas. They've caught us uh, in an unguarded state at different times. So this hopefully will be some help toward getting your budget in tow. If you don't know us, I'm Hope. And I'm Larry. This is Under the Median, where every week we talk about practical frugality. Believe it or not, when we set up our budget 36 years ago, one of the things that we forgot to add was Christmas and holiday expenses. The thing with Christmas is most people, when they consider Christmas as part of their budget, they only include one thing, Christmas gifts. Yeah. But your Christmas budget is a whole lot more than just those gifts that you're going to put under the tree for your friends and family every year. Let's take an example. If you travel for Christmas mm -hmm. and you have out of town guests that you wanna go see or family members, then you have to consider the traveling expenses. If you decorate for Christmas, you have decor expenses, especially if you're having them over to your house and you're having the main meal. And hosting dinners is one of those things that will catch you off guard if you're not careful. And this, of course, is not just for Christmas, but it's for every other holiday throughout the year. We just hosted an Easter dinner for a ton of our friends and family members. I'm going to give you an example of a carefully budgeted Easter dinner. Now, all the things on this Easter dinner, I took advantage of sales at this time of the year. Mm -hmm. Asparagus, for instance, was 88 cents per pound. The potatoes, the russet potatoes, I had a coupon, so I got eight pounds for $1.88. How much did all of this cost us? I did a cost evaluation sheet for you, showed you that for a dinner for 10 people for Easter, it came in just under $20. Now, the good thing about this is, as always, I overcooked, guys. So I am not touching the stove or any other apparatus except maybe my microwave to heat up some things for about the next three days. And the other thing that we did, too, we incorporated mm. other items in the meal because other people brought items over for desserts and different things that added to it. So we weren't the only ones making the food list. So anything on our food budget that had a zero beside it, that's because those were items that our grown children and their spouses or significant others brought with them when they came to the dinner. If these ideas are inspiring you to be more frugal, make sure you hit the like button. We'd love to have you a part of our frugal family. And if cutting those expenses every single month, particularly the ones you're already aware of, if that's one of your sticking points when it comes to sticking to a budget, we have some help for you. I wrote a free ebook called 10 Ways to Radically Reduce Your Expenses. I list the top 10 ways that we cut back our monthly expenses so we could save more money when we were saving for great big goals and doing it on a low income. I'll make sure that there is a link to that resource in the description of this video. Gifts can really come up and sneak up on your budget. There's a lot of different gifts that we have to give or that we desire to give that can be not a part of our budget. We don't even think about them. Maybe somebody got an advancement at work and they're having a party for them and they're giving them gifts, mm -hmm. uh, a promotional party. Uh, there's just all kinds of little hidden gifts. Sometimes it's really hard to account for them, but we need to make sure that our budget reflects those spendable items. We all seem to be aware of things like family birthdays, yes. right? So that's usually sort of on our radar. There are other things though, like weddings that will be coming up. Wedding showers, baby showers. You never know when somebody's oh, yeah. gonna pop the question and <laughs> they're going to say yes, and you never know when somebody's gonna say, guess what, we're expecting. <laughs> Those things come up very yes. unexpectedly. Right. You have to leave a little bit of room in your gift budget to take care mm -hmm. of those sorts of things when they come up. 
Here's something else that comes up seemingly every year, and this does get us every year around the last of May, the first of June, graduations. Yeah. You have a friend or family member who is graduating from grade school, high school, or even college, and you're invited to a great celebration in honor of them. You want to make sure that you're able to take something along in order to congratulate them for this milestone in their life. Here's just a couple of really quick ideas for how you can take care of these unexpected celebrations without busting your budget. One of the ways you can do it is by seeing if there is some sort of a group gift. This is particularly something that happens, I would say, in bridal showers or in showers for expectant mothers and fathers. Usually there's a larger item and a whole bunch of people are going in on that larger item. You find out who is in charge of collecting the money for that item, and you simply give them the amount that you're donating toward that item. Now, the person who gives the gift never puts down, this gift is from these families, and here's what each family gave toward this gift. That right. does not happen. Right. What does happen is that there is a card which is given that says this gift is given on behalf of the following families, yeah. and your family will be listed amongst that list. One of the things that you can give away that oftentimes we don't think about mm -hmm. is to give away an experience. For instance, an expected mother might really appreciate some meals that you mm -hmm. can make for her or maybe babysit her children while she's taking care of the newborn. There's all kinds of different things that you can do that won't cost you a lot of money, but will be very meaningful to that person. Final idea in the gift category before we move on to the next area of your budget that you might be forgetting, and that is give something homemade. This, these baskets are made by my future daughter-in-law, Delaney. She will be our daughter-in-law in five days, guys. We are so unbelievably excited. I had her make three of these. These baskets are gifts for the ladies who are helping me with the rehearsal dinner on the evening before the wedding celebration. Guys, she makes these out of recycled plastic bags. They're absolutely beautiful. They're useful. They're, you can wipe them up with a, with a damp cloth and they last a really long time. Uh, I'm gonna make sure, guys, she sells these in her Etsy shop. They're really, really cute. She's got some great stuff in there. I'll leave a link to her Etsy shop in the description of the video. But just an idea, handmade gifts. Social events can kind of creep mm -hmm. up on us from out of nowhere and cause us to spend extra money that we weren't planning on. There's so many mm -hmm. different things that can happen. Maybe a group of friends want to go out to eat or there's something special going on somewhere else. It's going to cost you a little bit of money to get in. Maybe there's some snacks or some things you want to buy because it has to do with a donation mm -hmm. toward that yeah. group. So there's all kinds of little things like that that can sneak up on us. Yeah, and you mentioned donations. I do think that is something that snakes up on us. <laughs> when somebody, especially if they're collecting money or collecting supplies for something that is an amazing opportunity to give into the lives of others, you want to yeah. be a part of it. Yeah. So planning ahead for those opportunities is super important. One of the things that Larry and I did now... Uh, many of you know that we are Christians, so 10% of our money right off the top goes to our tithe. Yes. But in addition to that, for years, we have had what we called our giving budget. And that's money which is allocated for something that just really tugs at our heartstrings and we think, I want to be a part of that. So we already have money set aside at the beginning of the yes. year. It's a sinking fund, which yeah. means it starts with the whole amount and throughout the year we spend it down until it reaches zero. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're unfamiliar with sinking funds, this is a great way to fund some of these things that may be unexpected in your budget. We yes. did a whole video on sinking funds and how to save for them and exactly what they are. We're going to make sure that that video, guys, is linked up above and also in the description of this video. And I can't tell you how much joy mm -hmm. that it's given Hope and I to be able yeah. to help other people when there's been a need, uh, an emergency need, Absolutely. perhaps, in a family that's needed some help at the time. We already had a sinking fund going. We had money there allocated. We just gave it to that family, and it was such a blessing. And to be very clear... When we were raising all four boys on a less than average income, this was not a whole lot of money. And sometimes it was things we could do like take them a meal yeah. or mow their lawn or rake their leaves or shovel their snow. Yeah, we live in the Midwest. These were <laughs> things that we could do that were acts of service that maybe didn't necessarily cost us any money or a lot of money. But we do think really 
really strongly yeah. that having a part of your budget to give to others, whether Very you are important. living below average or above average, that is super, super important. And of course, throughout time, frugality does, does work, guys, and you will save small amounts of money over time, which lead to large amounts of money. And now it's, it's really nice because our giving budget has been able to enlarge as our frugality has grown and <laughs> our bank account has grown. Insurance renewals can come kind of out of the corner and catch us unguarded, even though we should be able to expect mm -hmm. them. Our car insurance, our home insurance, uh, any insurance that you have at all, we have to pay that every year. You might as well have a category in your budget for insurance renewals. Well, this particularly happens for those of us who don't pay our insurance premiums every single month. If you are basing your beginning budget on your bank account statements over the last month or even last two months, sometimes you might miss this, especially if that insurance renewal happens every three months or every six months or once a year. Now, a caveat for dealing with this is to make sure that you are looking through the past several months of expenses in your bank account, not just the last one or two months. I think that you can base sort of a basic budget on this, but then you wanna go back through and just scour it really quickly Quickly and say, is there something in here that I have missed that's going to come back up again and I'm going to need to renew it? And by the way, if you pay those insurance premiums once a year instead of every month, a lot of times you can save some quick cash. We did it and we saved 8% on each of our policies. And the way we've dealt with this in the past recently is to mm -hmm. set up a sinking fund mm -hmm. for those so that they're, they come right off the top. Mm -hmm. Really, they're already accounted for for that year. Here's another one that has taken us unawares, and that's memberships, subscriptions, yeah. and online services. Oh you know what happens online? It's, it's this new sort of era of click the big red buy button, go to PayPal if you can, <laughs> and then PayPal automatically sets it up. Or even if you're using a debit card or a credit card, they're going to go, this is a renewal. Yeah. It's going to happen every 60 days or once a year, and you're going to automatically renew unless you call them and say, mm -hmm. stop, don't renew it, and we forget those things really, really easily. One of the ways to account for this is to just simply have a list, just yeah. an ongoing list. What am I paying for? What subscriptions do I have? And how often are they auto-renewing? Once you have that list, then that makes it much easier mm -hmm. to account for it in your monthly budget. Now, if they're taking out that renewal every three months, you're gonna take that whole amount, divide it by three, and every single month, you're going to set aside that specific amount so that when they renew it in three months, you already have that monthly money set aside for it. Home maintenance is another area mm -hmm. that can be a little sneaky. There are regular expenses that mm -hmm. we have to pay. We have to change our furnace filters out every mm -hmm. few months. You have to, you know, and that's all year round. That's because mm -hmm. you have the air conditioning on, you have the heater on. Uh, there's just so many things uh, involved with keeping a home up that you want to make sure that you're covering those. You have to mow the lawn. You have to have gas money to put in the lawnmower. You have to do some maintenance to your lawnmower. Uh, Every aspect of home ownership costs some money and you need to do an evaluation and then set up a budget for those items. There are some items that just don't occur as regularly twice a year, especially if you live in the Midwest, guys. Your HVAC guy is going to come over and in the spring, he's going to check your central air and make sure that's set up and ready to go for yeah. the season. And in the fall, he's going to come and he's going to check and make sure that furnace is going to kick on and not fail <laughs> you the first night that it goes below freezing because it's going to be unfortunate <laughs> if if you push that button to turn it on and nothing happens. That's, that's one of the things that yeah. we have built into our yearly home maintenance right. budget. One way to deal with this, guys, is to once again, very much like some of the other tips we've given you for make a list of, of the gifts that you give every single year, then leave a little bit of extra. We just told you make a list of your reoccurring subscriptions and make sure you have money set aside for that. Same thing with home maintenance. Yeah. You're going to make a list of all the regular home maintenance that must be done every single season. Usually we think of home maintenance in terms of seasonally because here in the Midwest, like every 12 weeks, <laughs> it's, it's 
time for a new season. <laughs> and so for us, it's like quarterly. We look at that quarterly and say, what do we do to get ready for spring? What do we do yeah. to get ready for fall? What do we do to get ready for winter? Yeah. And those are like things that are, they're on auto repeat for us. But each one of those things that we do to get ready for a new season has some costs associated with it. Mm -hmm. So what are those costs for you? What are those tasks that you do every quarter and how much are they costing you? Once you have that list, that gives you a super duper good sort of benchmark as to how much you should have in that yearly home maintenance fund. And then once again, you're going to add a little extra guys because yeah. stuff happens. Oh, yeah. All of a sudden there's a puddle of water in front of your water heater. <laughs> it's happened to us. Oh yeah. All of a sudden oh, yeah. you flip that furnace on and it stops working and it's the coldest night of the year. Yes, that yeah. happened yeah, to yeah. us too. Yeah. All these things we tell you to do it's because it's happened to us. Make sure that you have some in that. Now, one of the things I'd like to address super quickly is the fact that many people take that extra home maintenance, the oopsie didn't expect that to happen. They take it out of their three to six month emergency fund. If you have a fully funded emergency fund of three to six months, you can take those unexpected moments out of that fund if you wish. But if you have a little bit of extra give in your budget, we think it's a super good idea to put that money aside. We live in an era now where home office supplies mm -hmm. are very important. It used to be that all we needed maybe was some notebook paper and a pen <laughs> and a pencil. But now most of us have a computer and we have a printer and the printer requires a toner, ink cartridge. It requires mm -hmm. paper and it might even require some replacement after you've had it a few years. So there are some additional expenses that we have as far as our home office maintenance goes. Those need to be figured into your annual budget so they don't sneak up on you and all of a sudden your printers run out of ink and you've got to go and buy a, a $60 toner cartridge for it and you don't have it in your budget. Here's how you deal with this situation. We're the first to admit it is hard to find deals on toner and ink, it especially is. if you're going to someplace like Office Depot, because yeah. oftentimes when it comes to sales, they exclude those items. Yep. But what you can do, if you have a store loyalty card for Office Depot, then you can accrue money on that account and then use it. Now you need to be very careful because that money does expire. Mm -hmm. We did this one time, we bought something and there was a 100% rebate on it. And so we bought the maximum, put that rebate on our store loyalty card and we knew we had within 30 days we had to spend that money. So we waited until we had enough in there to almost pay for an entire cartridge. I think maybe it was even two cartridges. Yes, we bought cartridges this was biggie. with it. Yeah, and we paid yeah. like 10 bucks for yeah. two ink cartridges for the deal. printer. Yeah. So think of workarounds and every once in a while they don't exclude those items and you can make sure that you get a little bit of a discount on it. In fact, I remember now, you guys, I remember. Not only did we use all of our money we had accrued in that store loyalty card, but they actually did have a deal on printer ink. And it was like you spend a certain amount and you get $10 off. So we made Whoa. sure that we spent that amount, which was two ink cartridges. We got that $10 off. Plus, we were able to layer on all the money we'd accrued in the stored loyalty card. If you have younger kids, no doubt they're in school, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of costs involved with education. Yeah. And there's a lot of things that I really honestly say it sneaks up on you. Uh, a teacher might require their whole class to read a book that they don't have in their library and they have to go out and they have to buy the book. Maybe they can buy it used mm -hmm. on the used market, but still there's an expense mm -hmm. for that. Our uh, cooperative that we belong, belong to reads about, what, five to eight books mm -hmm. a year? And we've had to go and buy those books right at the very beginning. So we had to figure that amount of money in. And there's so many other little hidden expenses when it comes to education. Additional classes like band yeah. or choir or even cross-country team, things like that. Schools are beginning to offload some of those expenses on to parents. So if you want to sign your child up for those courses, it's going to cost you an extra amount of money. Yeah. So it's not just walking in and paying for the fees for the year, for the fees and for the books. It's a whole lot of extra expenses. And let me tell you, 
I walked into Office Depot and looked at a long list of supplies that each student was supposed to bring to class. Wow. And I thought I was going to, I don't even have like grade school age children anymore. And I thought I was going to have a coronary right there <laughs> in the store. <laughs> One of the things you want to do is you want to make sure that you are watching for back to school deals on mm -hmm. those specific items. I want to know from you guys who have children who are still in grade school or even in high school, what are you doing about these back to school expenses? How are you affording this long list of supplies that teachers need? And believe me, my kudos to teachers because they are underpaid and underappreciated. Yeah. And believe me, they are underfunded. Yeah. So they are not asking are. for these supplies simply for fun. You know why they're asking for these supplies? So that the cost of those supplies doesn't come out of their personal pocketbook. So I get it, but I would love to know how are you dealing with it and keeping it within a reasonable budget? There are so many things involved with this. There's calculators you'd have to buy. Oh, yeah. There's lunches. There's field trips. And if they're in the band, you might have to buy a musical instrument unless the, the school supplies that instrument. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, you'll have to have your own. Cost of lunches. Have your child pack a lunch from home, guys. Much, much less expensive. The cost of field trips. Make sure that you yeah. are asking whichever club or whichever teacher is sponsoring that field trip. As a parent, I always ask, tell me all of the expenses inclusive. Yeah. Because some people are not as budget-minded as you and I are. And they'll say, well, it's, yes. you know, it's $25 for them to get into the play. And they neglect to tell you as a parent that you're going to have to pay a transportation fee, that they're going to have to either bring a lunch or buy a lunch, that you're going to, they're going to a specific restaurant. It's going to cost you for that restaurant meal. I always am very, very specific with what mm -hmm. I am asking before I tell that child, yes, you can go, or I'm sorry, we're going to have to pass on this opportunity. The other thing to take into consideration is periodic fund raisers. Yep. And this is, this is one of my pet peeves. <laughs> I feel like, and remember, our, our son is going to be a senior next year, and he is homeschooled, but we're involved in a large homeschool co-op that has a lot of the same opportunities available as he would have in a public school setting. Yeah, yeah. So he definitely, he's involved in the extracurriculars. He's involved yeah. in madricals. He's involved yeah. in Please. a vocal jazz ensemble in the place. And yeah. all of those cost additional fees. Not only that, you get into it and you have the people who are in charge of this who say all of a sudden, oh, you need to bring a snack, snack. for 30 That's students. Yeah. Oh, by the way. And oh then they gosh. tell you what their idea of a snack is. I'm like, well, that's too bad because that's not my idea of a snack. Yeah. Um, they tell you that there's a fundraiser. Your child needs to be there. Your child needs to take part in the fundraiser. There are a lot of little handouts and, oh, how about a little more? How about a little more? How about a little more? Yeah. Once again, before your child enrolls, Ask, ask about questions. All, ask all the questions you <laughs> yes. need to. I am not opposed. Clearly, we're not opposed because our sons have been involved in a lot of extracurricular yeah. activities and we have paid for them, mm -hmm. but we really tried really hard to know ahead of time what exactly is this going to cost us. Once yeah. we knew the total cost, it didn't bother us as much because mm -hmm. we'd already budgeted for it. Yep. Car maintenance is another area in your budget that you'll need to have money for. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have an older car, you'll need to allow more money yeah. for them because they're going to cost more money to keep going. And even if you have a newer car, you've still got registration fees, you have oil changes. It even costs to fill your tires with air. And the other thing that can cost a, lot of, a little bit of money throughout the year is if you have your car washed at a car wash place or even a place that you wash it but you have to pay to use their facility, that's going to cost. Those are all little amounts that add up. And it's those little amounts that can get us from time to time. So it's very important to really assess how much is that car going to cost me to maintain for the year that you're budgeting for it. And make a list of those expenses. Do you all sense a reoccurring theme here? <laughs> a lot of lists involved in this video, but boy, do they help center you yes, and get do. your head in the game as to exactly what this is really going to cost you. Mm -hmm. Registration fees. 
oil changes. Registration fees in Illinois are upwards of $200, but I know in other states, they are a whole lot more. And those of you in Cali, man, you have got to pass that annual smog check, right? So you gotta make sure that your car is up to snuff when it comes yeah. to all the current standards. That also costs you. There are various costs in various states, so you have to mm -hmm. make a list and run through exactly what it's gonna cost you to maintain that car and also to repair that car. And once again, a lot of people take their car repairs out of their emergency fund. If you have a three to six month fully funded emergency fund, you can certainly take repairs, unexpected repairs out of that fund if you want to. Here's that big number 10. It will take you by surprise. Medical and healthcare costs. And Hope and I have really hit this one this year. One of the things that we're having to pay extra for because of our little injuries is physical therapy. And every time we go in, we have to pay a certain amount that the insurance does not cover toward that. So we have to budget a little more money in this category. Unless you have really, and I do mean really premium insurance, you are going to pay a deductible yeah. and also a co-pay. Yeah. We have pretty good insurance. Mm -hmm. When it comes to insurance, insurance is our number one budget category. It is. By and it far, is. we pay more every single month for in various kinds of insurance yeah. than, than we do any other single budget category. It comprises upwards of 50% of our regular income just to pay for insurance across the board, all insurance, home insurance, car insurance, health insurance, all of those insurances. One of the things that you can do is shop around. If your employer provides insurance coverage, this is not as easy to do. But if you are independently seeking insurance, you certainly can, can look around once a year and see what is available on the open marketplace for insurance policies. Mm -hmm. You need to balance those co-pays and that deductible with the monthly policy premium amounts. Mm -hmm. The other thing to do is not be afraid to call your insurance company with questions ahead of yeah. time before something happens. Yeah. Say, help me to understand my coverage. Yeah. We knew that with the physical therapy, we're paying out of pocket for that physical therapy until we reach $1,250. <laughs> Once we do that, we have to pay 20% of the cost and they pick up 80% of the cost. Six months is a long time to be in physical therapy, guys. And we know mm -hmm. that we can sit down and we can figure out about what it's going to cost us for me to be able to continue this therapy for six months. 17% of the businesses in the United States of America have really premium insurance offered that you don't have those copays and deductibles. But that means the vast majority of all the rest of us mm -hmm. are paying the copays and the deductibles. Okay. Yeah. You need to make sure that you have figured that into your monthly budget as well as the premiums that you're paying. And you need to make sure that you ask for itemized bills. Before you pay a bill, make sure you know what you are paying for and call your insurance company, ask all the questions you need to know answers to. It's all about figuring your expenses and how to save money. Now, if your budget is really tight, and we've had a very tight <laughs> budget in our lifetime, there are some certain things that you can do in order to save money. And we have a video on it right over there.